home workouts. Are they better or worse for you? In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to work out at home and still get in great shape. Workouts. Big home workout guy. Yeah, yeah you are now. <laughs> used to not be. We're so kind much. of we kind of flip options these days. You've been in the gym lately. You used to be like only yeah. home workout guy, and now you've uh, you flip flop. I mean, yeah. I definitely think there's. Uh, I think <laughs> where I am today is that I see tremendous value in both. I think it, it really depends on either your goals, also uh, you, if, you, what you can do, right? Because not everybody has the luxury to work out from home or not everybody has the luxury to be able to go to a gym too. So, Well, I think when you look at the data on what prevents people from working out, uh, at least the gym data, because we worked in the gym industry and they had they, they would show you like, this is what keeps people from coming. Convenience was it was at the top. Cleanli yeah. Cleanliness was number two. Right, uh, but convenience was was number one. Like, uh, yeah, if it was too far for them to drive, that was a huge barrier. Well, when you yeah. think about it, it home actually addresses all three. It of does. Us. Yeah. <laughs> so convenience, obviously, yeah. cleanliness. It's I your mean, house. It, as long as you take care of your shit, it's <laughs> yeah. pretty clean. And cost, it's free because it's your home. And the cost is the other one. So yeah, I it was mean, convenience, clean, cleanliness, and cost. Yeah. And so home workouts. The odds of you being successful and consistent are actually higher. In my experience, I find this to be true uh, as well. I think there's a bit of a bias uh, when you look at the data for gyms because a lot of people think you can't have an effective workout at home. Like a lot of people think that you need lots of different equipment. Mm -hmm. um, you need machines yeah. and, and treadmills and ellipticals. Uh, but no, you, you don't need uh, much equipment at all. I mean, when I owned a, a studio, when I had a personal training studio, so this was a business. This was a fitness business. I had very basic equipment, the kind of equipment you could probably outfit a garage with I had in my studio. Um, and I have grand open gyms. When when we grand opened uh, one of the clubs that, that I ran here in San Jose, there was no strength training area for a while because it was under construction. So my trainers had to train people with bands and body mm -hmm. weight. And the worry was, we're not going to sell any personal training. People aren't going to want to become members. The members loved it. Absolutely. Now, why they love it? Because it's effective. It's just as effective. You don't need... So that's like one of the number one myths around fitness is that you need lots of equipment um, to to get anywhere with your fitness. Nothing can be further uh, from the truth. Yeah, I could make the case too that for most people, it's probably a, a better place to start for that reason. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think that, I mean, one of the most common things that we see where people have setbacks is if the, if one, they don't injure themselves because a large percentage of people injure themselves in the yes. first three months. But this idea of that more is technically better. And so, you know, is simplifying it to a home workout um, that seems probably very basic to the average person is probably a better place for most all people to start anyways. And so, to get the most out of, like, you know, again, you hear say all the time, the goal is to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. If you are just getting started in your fitness journey, uh, st starting at home is probably one of the best strategies. Well, well, the if you want to talk about like a real true beginner as well, like there's an intimidation factor to that, like right. showing up to a gym and not knowing, you know, where, what to do, how to begin. Uh, and to have like a plan and have it all kind of like conveniently located at your house and you can kind of set this up and, and really start chipping away at it and uh, feeling confident in what you're doing and your skills of uh, lifting weights. I think that'd help a lot. Well, the truth is um, there's a lot of barriers between you and working out when you have to go somewhere else to do it. There just is. You have to get in the car. You have to drive there. Um, you How's traffic? Uh, what's the day look like? And then when you're there... What's the atmosphere? Who's around you, et cetera, et cetera. So what you do with a home workout is you eliminate all those barriers. Now that doesn't mean there aren't barriers, um, but it but it does eliminate a lot of barriers. So when you're and when it comes to results with fitness, nothing trumps consistency. Consistency is it's so important that a subpar workout done consistently will give you better results than the best possible well programmed workout will give you if you do it inconsistently. It's just a fact. Like Now, of course, in the extremes, maybe that's not true. You could do a terrible, consistent workout. But so long as it's you know not too far outside of the realm of appropriate workouts, uh, consistency is key. And, and doing it at home um, just helps. It helps a lot with that. So um, I, again, I think people don't consider home workouts oftentimes because they think, well, what can I do? Like I, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't have... 
equipment. Uh, I maybe I, I have a little living room. Like, how do I work out at home? I know one exercise, push-ups. Like, what else could I possibly do? But that's not the case at all. A little bit of education, a good workout program. Um, you can apply anywhere um, and get exceptional results. And now, again, the 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 most important factor of consistency now um, is is much more likely because you're home. You're already there. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Now, what are some of the strategies or points that you think are important for somebody who is going to say, let's start a workout at home, like things to consider, like everything from tools to mm -hmm. frequency to like yeah. what, what comes to mind when basic you think equipment of, needs. Yeah. Uh, I think before we get into that, it is, there is one thing that's important uh, to consider, which is you want to be able to get, be able to give yourself somewhat of a self-assessment before you get started because, and this is just, I'm a trainer. Okay. So I'm going to speak now for my, my, the, you know, the trainer side of me. Um, not all exercises are appropriate for everybody. Even if the exercises are amazing, they're not appropriate for everybody. And you're going to be able to perform some exercises well and, and other exercises not so well. And so there is a bit of a self-assessment that needs to happen when you're starting a workout. And it, 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 now I'm going to give you a basic one. Okay. It can get much better than what I'm about to say, but there's a very basic one, which is level of fitness level of comfort with doing certain movements. Like that's a very basic assessment. But if you're not exercising now, uh, then very little is needed to get your body to start progressing. And you and you only change your workout and make it harder very slowly and incrementally. Okay, so you start where you're at. That's the most important thing. What you don't want to do is say, okay, I'm going to start working out. I haven't exercised in years. Uh, so the goal is going to be to get as tired as possible in this workout and really make myself sweat and sore. No, 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 no. That is, you've gone way above and beyond what is necessary and what ends up happening with that. And so you may be thinking, well, what's the, what's, what's the harm? Who cares if you go above and beyond? Once you just get better results, once you get there faster. No, it's actually the opposite. Exercise serves as a stimulus for your body to change. And if you exceed the, the, the appropriate stimulus that your body can recover and adapt from, okay. In other words, if you do more than you can handle, uh, then you're not going to adapt. You're just going to, if you're lucky, heal and come back into the same workout again and not really improve. So what does that look like? It looks like a little more than what you're doing now. So um, I'll tell a story to kind of illustrate this. I remember as an early trainer, I had a cousin of mine, an older cousin, come into the gym. I had just become a personal trainer and they decided uh, they wanted to start working out. Now this person, normal, healthy individual, but not they didn't work out. They had no fitness experience whatsoever. So I took them through a, a full leg workout and the intensity was high. It wasn't crazy, but it was high. And we did hack squats and leg extensions and leg press and walking lunges and leg curls. And she never came back. She never came back because she literally couldn't move for four or five days. Now, I, I remember doing the workout with her and thinking like, this is probably okay. But what I didn't consider, she didn't work out at all. Yeah. What, in fact, I could have done 10 bodyweight squats with her and that would have been perfectly appropriate for her because she, on a regular basis, she doesn't do 10 body weight squats. So uh, some kind of a self-assessment and there are other, there's self-assessment tools out there that can really get you honed in on what exercises to focus on. But uh, at the very least, you have to start where you're at and that's the appropriate place to go with your workouts. And if you start there, you'll get better results than if you go above it. So always consider that. I remember making this mistake for such a long time with clients. And I think the the gym culture is another reason why at home is so great too, is I think the uh, uh, the gym culture perpetuates this. Like, of course. In our, in the, in the, at least in our gym um, and the, all the gyms that I ever worked in, the the culture around training clients was how sore could you get them mm -hmm. to the point where the clients were seeking that thinking that this is what makes a good trainer good trainer in their eyes was can someone kick my ass hard enough and, and motivate me enough to want to do it or come and want to come back and it's a terrible culture that has been uh in the in the gym 
uh, space for a really long time. And so not only did I make the mistake thinking that was a good idea, but even when I think I realized that this was not a winning strategy for my clients, it was hard to get out of that because uh, clients thought that's what they were There's supposed to do. expectation built, yeah, from the, the yes. clients coming in. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, you had to overcome that. Something else that perpetuates that is you work out around other people who are working out, yeah. who are at different levels than you. Yeah. So even as an experienced individual myself, I've been working out in gyms for uh, 30 years, over 30 years. And uh, I will train now. I'm I'm now in my mid 40s. I've been doing this a long time. I'm pretty good at this, but I'm still better when I'm working out by myself at my house. In terms of appropriate, I'm I'm far more likely, even though I don't do this often, but I'm far more likely to use a weight that's a little too heavy, yeah, or train a little harder than maybe I should, uh, because I'm working out with other people who may be training really hard or using more weight than me. Now, when I'm at home. It's, it's, it's really, I'm much more accurate with how I feel and what I need. And I don't care what's on the bar. I don't care what I'm doing because it's just me by myself. That is far more true for people who are not as experienced as I am. Like you're in the gym, you're just getting started. You may feel like, but th this isn't true by the way. No one's watching you or judging you in the gym. That's not true, but it can feel that way. And you're in there doing your thing and you see the person next to you going way harder. And it may just get you to work out in a way that's uh, not as appropriate. So working out at home can facilitate this much better connection to what's appropriate for yourself. Uh, when you're exercising. Now, one of the first things to consider when you're when you're doing a workout program or you're or you're embarking on a fitness journey is you want to try to develop a, a a behavior consistency with this. And a behavior is easier to build and to turn into a real behavior when it's practiced frequently. Mm -hmm. All right. So what does that mean? That means you're better out working out more days than you are not working out. But you have to do so appropriately. I just said meet yourself where you're at. So this does not mean you work yeah. out hard every so single day. This means even less intensity than you initially even thought right. uh, before that. Because if we're going to stretch this out and try to consistently hit almost, let's say, five days a week is yes. like a targeted goal. I mean, your intensity has to be very low in the, the volume itself as well. Like we have to be very mindful of how you're going to feel the next day and, and be able to have the energy to do that the following right. day. I recommend, you know, daily workouts more often for people at home than people who go to the gym. Like going to the yeah. gym, going daily means you have to get in your car, drive yeah. there, whatever. When you're working out at home, uh, it's just, if you do it more often, and again, do it appropriately, train yourself appropriately. If you do it more often, it becomes a, a ritual. It's like a daily thing rather than like this day and this day I do it. It's like, oh yeah, most days I get up and I, I do this 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 workout. Um, and then what you'll find is over a short period of time, it kind of becomes a part of your day. So consider that when you're working at home, that doing something most days is probably going to help you to build long-term behavior on exercise than not. I, I do want to address one of the other benefits um, that I found working out from home and something that we have communicated on the podcast more than once, but it, I think really important in this specific topic since we're talking about at-home training. And, and, I, and I definitely did not think this way as a young trainer and did not teach clients this, but absolutely – uh, not only practice this myself, but then teach family and friends that this is a great strategy when we're at home. And that is the freedom to be able to break the workout up too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the, there's this I idea that you need to, you know, put all these exercises in a half hour, hour, you know, uh, window and get as much of a sweat and pump and sore as you can in that hour. And that's what gets the most effective. And it's so not true. It's the opposite is true. And one of the things I found extremely valuable with doing an at-home workout was the flexibility. And this, I love this. I did a lot of this when uh, Max was first born, so I could be around with him. And and anybody who's had a newborn knows that you know they're either feeding, pooping, or sleeping for most of the day. And so you know when he was uh, when he was feeding with his mom, I have a time. I go do an exercise, and then after he's done feeding, then I could burp him and hang around with him and play with him, and then go back and do it. There's nothing wrong with uh, building it into your your lifestyle at home and and understanding you can actually get a really effective workout doing that too. Not only do you get an effective workout, there there's some data that suggests it might even be better. It's ideal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it's, why it's I think not it's a so, compromise. That's why I think it's so important to know yeah. is because it's not even not even is it not a compromise, but it's it, for me it's and optimal. for what the data yeah. says is it's it's optimal yeah. and ideal. So yeah. and and you have the convenience now because it's your house. Yes. So you could just get and it, you know the other the other benefit to that Adam is it breaks up your day and produces energy. You know, every time you move, 
and induce some kind of an exercise. You produce catecholamines, endorphins. Um, it gets things moving. It facilitates creativity and productivity. So uh, when you do it that way, it's, you, you notice these little boosts of energy throughout the day yeah. as you're doing them. So um, you know, either do it or not, but it's not a compromise, right. I, I think is the point. And because it's so convenient, it's now a possibility. Um, the next point I'll say, and this again becomes much more uh, of a realistic um, factor, um, and it becomes an import more important one when you work out at home, and that's to start your day off with a workout. Now, the data on this is, is interesting. People who work out first thing in the morning are more likely to be consistent mm. than people who work out at any other time of the day. We all saw this as trainers with uh, whoever came in the most frequently was always our morning class. 5 a.m. They never, they never missed. 5 a.m. The one you wanted to cancel. Rain, yeah. sleet, <laughs> snow, shine, they're there. You isn't, know? That, isn't that so funny as a, as a 20-something-year-old trainer? That was the, the – because, you know, well, most of us were in our 20s and we – stayed up late like most people yeah. do in their 20s and i remember like so many times wishing that my 5 a.m never would, would cancel <laughs> no, so i could sleep no. in i know right and like they never canceled it was no. always the middle of the day people or at either 5 p.m on people that would cancel but not your 5 a.m nope. your 5 a.m -ers locked in yes as are, consistent as the sun was rising um yeah we know this in gyms anybody's ever managed or worked in gyms you have your morning crowd that comes in and it's the same people and they don't it's the same people every morning yeah. and it's always like that for years and years and years everything else is much more in flux starting the day off means that there's less things that get in the way right it, it, the day's not developed yet you don't have yeah. fires to put out you don't have work you don't have oh my well, god it, I'm tired. it also means that you you start your day with that and then you prioritize everything else around that right. versus your you prioritize party. your day and then you try and insert yes. a workout it just it, there's something to be said about doing that, it, and and why that is so successful for most people with consistency it, is that you literally are building the day around. Hey, I yeah. get up and I get my workout, then I do all well, these. Not other only things. the day, but then you're also setting up your night because you have know you have to get up in the morning. Correct. And, right. Uh, so then, yeah, you're less likely to probably you know go overboard yeah. uh, that N night. No, and it, and because you're at home, this becomes uh, more of a reality because you're at home, you wake up and you get your coffee or whatever and you start your day off. You start your day off. It also has a an effect on insulin sensitivity throughout the day. I mean, I could talk about all the physiological benefits of it. Data shows when you work out first thing in the morning, it's more likely to positively affect your nutrition and your other behaviors throughout the day. But uh, although those are important, we can make an argument for them. And my, my opinion is that the best argument is the bottom line is you're much more likely to be consistent. And because you don't have to drive anywhere, start your day off uh, with a workout. The next thing is you want to consider home-friendly equipment. Now, uh, in an ideal world, a home gym would have a rack, a barbell, dumbbells, an dumbbells, adjustable, yeah. you know, Maybe a, a kettlebell. adjustable bench. And you you pretty much you'd have a, a, a nice free weight set to do a lot of things. That's not reality for most people. So most people are like, well, okay, well, what can I get away with, right? Bands and your body. Mm -hmm. If you have a good set of bands, which you could buy nowadays for like 50 bucks, and I mean a good set. You could buy a cheap set for even less, but a decent set's like 50 bucks and use your body weight, you could train your entire body. You can do any, any exercise that you can think of, you could do with body weight and bands, um, and you could get an absolutely phenomenal workout and bands are so convenient you could do them in a hotel room you could do them outside where you put them around a tree or a bench you could do them of course in your house you do them when you travel and they take up so little space i mean i used to have a, a set of bands that i used to carry in a little bag yeah that was this big and and i mean that Just that was it, it. In your travel and when case. i traveled to train clients there was a period of time there where i trained clients in their home that's what i took with me i took bands i had bands and myself, and we could do anything we wanted. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt. Look, we're talking about home workouts. So here's what we did. Maps Anywhere, it's one of the best at-home workout programs, requires almost no equipment, bands, and your body. That's all you need. We're gonna make it 50% off. So if you're interested, you're watching this episode, you want an at-home workout program that's awesome, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. It's such a good place to start too. I mean, getting to, like body weight and bands uh, are gonna provide enough in intensity for you 
And and then the also the body weight portion of like having to control your own body weight in space, I just think is a important skill totally. mm -hmm. to acquire before I stack a barbell on somebody's back or ask them to do something that where they're carrying weight in space. I think being able to control your own body weight yeah, in because space, you live in your body, right, is is a great. This is why. Uh, gymnastics is one of the best sports that you can teach kids before you build on and layer on any other sports is because that body awareness and control and space. And obviously a lot of that is all uh, body weight stuff. I think that having a client do body weight and bands to start oh. is such a great way to lay a foundation for all pursuits, whether you're trying to build tons of muscle, lose a bunch of body fat, or just be overall healthy. Such a great way it to lay a foundation. It should be a prerequisite requirement. I mean, to, to train your body weight first and really um, to address a lot of those things, to see where the imbalances lie, to see where we need more stability. And, you know, you're going to be able to appropriately apply pressure and, and apply that kind of resistance uh, by feeling your way through that with body weight more so than uh, reacting uh, towards some load that's sort of uh, weighing you down. So uh, to be able to create that strength, stability, and that that solid uh, response and mechanics uh, with your form, like body weight is, is superior. It's 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 an exceptional uh, way to work out. You can vary the intensity and in the, in the challenge of it dramatically. So if I, bands and body weight is appropriate for complete beginners. It's also appropriate for the super advanced because of how you adjust and change the exercises and the tempo. I can make it as easy or as hard, uh, almost as I want. And there isn't a body part or part of the body that I can't train with those two things. And they require almost, they're very inexpensive in almost no space. Now, of course, you could get the gym set up for your house, but my point with this is you can do a lot with what I just said. Well, I think that's one of the best parts, and you've said this for a long time on the show, you've talked about how uh, in, in, not even fully being able to articulate the science of what exactly is happening, but the soreness that you get from bands is so different in comparison. It's to less like, damaging. Yeah, it, it just is. does. And so when you think about getting started on your routine and starting at home and utilizing tools uh, like bands, it's such a safer, smarter way mm -hmm. to scale your routine because it's so much easier to make that mistake when you're using free weights of like, oh yeah, I can do this, this is fine. And then doing a weight or doing a, a, doing something that you load that is so much more than what your body needs to adapt and grow and change. And that's what's ideal. Ideally, we are trying to just stretch, to just progressively overload the body enough to send that signal to build muscle, to change, but not so much that it's so much damage that I'm crippled for the yes. next three days and sore and I don't want to work out because I did too much in there and then my body is just trying to prioritize recovering and not adapting and growing. 100%. And lastly, while you're doing this at home, one of the most important factors that you can adjust that will help ensure that you'll get continual success and progress, in other words, your body will consistently change, especially in that first year or two of your of this journey, is to adjust the intensity on a daily basis and base it off of how you feel. So you may think a super hard workout is the best workout, but that's only true if a super hard workout is appropriate for your body at that moment. And many times it's not. Many times, especially when you first get started, the workout the day before, you're still feeling it. Today's workout's going to be much easier. Maybe you didn't get great sleep. Uh, maybe you just woke up with less energy. Um, it, it doesn't matter. Adjust the intensity before you adjust anything else, before you even adjust the volume, meaning the total amount of sets, before you even adjust the frequency or how many days a week you're working out. The intensity is something you want to look at and adjust based off of how you feel. Now, here's a little, a good rule of thumb. You should feel more energized at the end of your workouts than you do uh, at the beginning. So if you wake up in the morning, you go out to work out, you do your workout afterwards, you're like, man, I feel good. Then you're doing a good job. If after your workout, you're like, wow, I need to go back to bed. You did a bad job. Yeah. So adjust the intensity of your workouts based how you feel. Um, and you, you're, you're more often than not going to train yourself appropriately. Yeah. Soreness and sweat. Those are not your indicators. And mm -hmm. I know that's very common, but uh, what Sal's saying, if you can figure out how to kind of stop yourself just shy of overdoing it, you're going to come back the next workout and you're going to feel all of that strength and energy applied. I, you know, I can't stress enough what you're, the point you're making and 
how much people need to think about that for a second because I don't think they understand that the feeling of you feel more energized from your workout is very foreign to most Completely. people yes. working out. Most people are searching for that. I got crushed or that was really difficult or I survived. Yes. And that <laughs> there's the, the fitness space has done a really bad job of communicating that and how that does not measure an effective workout. In fact, it's most likely an ineffective workout. If you are got, if you're that exhausted, you're that beat up afterwards. Sure. You got some mental fortitude or toughness through it, but as far as the results and then what your body needs uh, in order to adapt and change, you've overdid it, you've mm -hmm. overreached. And so using that as a gauge of, hey, I have these things, these few workouts or bands or bodyweight exercises I'm gonna do. Sure, I wanna push myself and challenge myself, but not at the expense of I walk out uh, of my garage or wherever you do your at-home workout and I'm exhausted, I'm spent, or I feel terrible the rest of the day. And so if you are doing that, you need to learn how to scale that back. And the goal is leaving feeling like you could do more. No, that's uh, this is an, a, very a very, very important point when it comes to uh, working out. And again, don't judge the workout and then say, well, I should be able to do more. Base it off of how you feel. And whatever you did doesn't really matter. In other words, uh, it matters in terms of if it's appropriate, if it's good exercises, good programming. But what I mean is sometimes people get caught up in they're, they're, they're doing the workout and they're like, man, I, I, this feels like it's too much. Then they'll look at the workout, but it shouldn't be too much. This should be easy. I should be able to do this. It doesn't matter. Base it off of how you feel. Adjust your intensity off that regardless of what you're doing. And that will more often than not direct you um, in the right direction. All right. I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.